we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we are pleased to have Corby Fichter here to present to us today. Um, Corby is Regional Vice President of the Southwest Iowa Region for Farm Credit Services of America. He leads their Southwest Iowa Region with offices in Red Oak, Harlan, and Carroll. He has been in this role since 2015, prior to which he was the financial officer in their Red Oak office. Aside from his role with Farm Credit Services of, Amer of America, Corby, Corby also manages a 1,700-acre corn and soybean farm near Shenandoah, Iowa. Um, he is a fourth-generation farmer and manages the operation, including all financial marketing and production aspects. Corby is a 1980 graduate of Iowa State um, with a degree in agricultural business. His wife is a 1981 Iowa State grad, and his three children are fourth-generation Iowa State students as well, with all with degrees in ag-related fields. Um, please help me welcome Corby Victor. Thank you. Everybody hear me okay? Good in the back? Yeah. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to get right into presentation, but I got a quick, couple of quick questions. Who here is from Iowa? Raise your hand. A few. How many here grew up family farm, family's own land? Got a few. Okay. Uh, just trying to get a good feel of... Uh, audience here and uh, so what I'm going to talk about um, first of all I just want to thank Cassie, Teresa, Professor Lamke for the opportunity to be here uh, inviting Farm Credit to come and talk about uh, uh, our Iowa landscape so I have some numbers I got some facts and figures some perspectives but really what I want to hit upon today is kind of the emotional part uh, the why why we own land in Iowa, who farms it, uh, how is it farmed. Uh, so I kind of want to get into that a little bit uh, today, okay. I can promise you I'll run out of time, okay. Uh, the last piece of this on current state of our ag economy, if there's questions when I'm done, I've got some slides about that, but I don't plan to hit that today because I know I'll run out of time, okay. Um, just a, a little more quick intro from what Cassie told you. Um, I started as a loan officer up in Forest City, Iowa, 1980. Uh, we'll talk about the 80s in a little bit too, because it was a different time than maybe, obviously, what we're used to today. Uh, but I was a lending officer, uh, approved loans, worked on credit uh, for all kinds of ag type products. I'll get into farm credit here in a minute. Uh, then I went to work for a special accounts department for a while in the 80s. Foreclosures, bankruptcies, uh, mediations. Uh, there were some tough times in the 80s in Iowa. And I uh, had the opportunity to, to be involved in that. And it taught me a lot about relationships on how to get along with farmers and people that own land that were losing it. And it was a pretty rough time. Uh, but I uh, taught a lot of lessons back then. Learned a lot as well. Um, Came branch manager in Forest City in 87, and then moved back to uh, Southwest Iowa in 92 to start raising our family. Uh, and also start farming. I'll talk about that in a second too. I became a leader, Marketplace VP in 2000, and in 2015, now I lead Red Oak, Harlan, and Carroll. So what do I do every day? Just trying to give you a perspective of background. Um, I would lead all the sales and credit functions for Southwest Iowa in those three offices specifically lead 18 financial officers that sell and serve our customers in 22 counties. We have about 1,500 operating customers. Um, we have about 2,000 real estate customers who most of those would own Iowa land, okay? I also am responsible for a couple leaders that lead our crop insurance division, financial management piece, and also the operations side. So who's Farm Credit? Many of you probably know a little bit about us. Some of you may know more. Um, we are an ag lender. So our primary products are real estate mortgages, operating credit, 
machinery equipment financing, grain livestock facilities, rural residences, crop insurance, financial management. We are 100% owned by the people we serve. What's that mean? We're a co-op. So we're owned by our members. We are part of the nationwide farm credit system, which was started way back in 1917. Just to give you an idea, our mission statement for Farm Credit Service America is to be agriculture's most valued partner. I want to show you a footprint. We serve Iowa, South Dakota, Nebraska, Wyoming. 57,000 customers, $30 billion in loans, 48 retail offices, 1,750 employees. I serve Southwest Iowa, okay? I am from that far corner county because on the side, oh, I'll get into that one next one. This gives you an idea of what we do from a lending standpoint. About half our business is grain, corn, beans, wheat, oats, throughout those four and a third states. 10% of our business, landlords and investors. That's the real estate market. People that don't farm, but invest in ag land. We have about 45 to 50% of all the mortgages in Iowa, Nebraska, South Dakota, and Wyoming on our books. So people that are buying, people that have real estate debt, we have a roughly about half of that, okay? The other part of our business is livestock, ethanol, any other ag related business, okay? On the side, I also farm. Um, fourth generation farmer, as Cassie said, um, I wanted to give you some ideas about land that I own because it'll give you perspective as we go through some more slides, okay? When I get into the history of Iowa land. We own 980 acres today. Well, we will in January. My first farm I bought in 1983. I want you to remember that date, okay? Paid $2,100 an acre. My cheapest farm was 1987 at $850 an acre. The most expensive was five years ago at $10,000 an acre. We close in one in January at $8,200. If I would take all those acres and average the price on all those acres were at 4100 What's my point? What I want to tell you, if I cash rented all my own land out at today's rent, and if I take inflation, obviously at 850 to 8200 lots of inflation, if I take deflation, the one I bought for 10,000 that's only worth seven or eight today, and average that, I have a nine or 10 percent return per year on that investment. I take that any day. OK? That doesn't always work. And we're going to get into a little bit about um, that return, especially in these times where these prices are. But it gives you a little background of, of what we have. Okay. This slide, I want to hit this one a little bit. This is probably the reason why people own Iowa land. And you could probably say whether, Ben, same in Nebraska, same reason, right? Provides a steady income. You can rent it out. It's a long-term investment that over time has either been a good investment, sometimes a great investment. Many of you may know the name David Cole. Dave is a professor at Virginia Tech. Uh, he's done a ton of research, ton of seminars. Uh, he was at a Young and Beginning conference last winter for us and made this statement. Land is either stable or increasing in value 80% of the time. I'm going to show you a slide in a minute to show you that. Probably the biggest reason why we own land is Family value, sentimental. Once you own it, you never want to sell it. And families in Iowa and throughout the Midwest obviously do all they can to keep it in the family. 
you can see it. The land's always there, and God's not making any more. I got a story behind that one just to give you that perspective. Um, I have an uncle that worked for NASA. And for years and years, I was trying to convince him to finally buy a farm. Of course, I wanted to be his tenant. I wanted to rent it. Uh, I finally convinced him to do that. I don't remember the year, but he said, I want you to go to the neighbors and figure out who would sell me a farm. And as a good nephew and as a potential tenant, I said, okay, I'll do that. Um, got lots of no's along the way. Um, but the one I remember the most, uh, neighbor lady lives about two miles away. She lost her husband. They farmed. She was a widow. I said, Lois, my uncle would like to buy your farm and he will pay you top money. Are you interested? And, and we were pretty good friends. We knew each other well and she looked at me and said, nope, because I can see it every day. And I would tell you that was a time that he was willing to offer for her acres that that thing it was a million bucks. 90 years old, put the money in the bank. She says, I won't sell it. I can see it, we farmed it forever, I want to keep it. And I said, I completely understand. It's a very huge emotional tie when you own it, it's always hard to get rid of it. The last piece on here, most people buy land to hold. I would tell you it's, your, it's our mutual fund for life. That's what it feels like to most people, okay? I got a few slides. I'm going to give credit to a couple of professors here at Iowa State. Uh, this report was done this summer. It was given out, um, and they have done a ton of work on land ownership, who rents land, and why. So I have a few slides in my presentation from the work that they did, but I'm giving them full credit. This is very good stuff for everybody to understand, okay? Do you know there's 30 million crop acres in Iowa? Take all of Iowa, take the cities out, all the towns out, 30 million acres that are farmed. And that didn't, I'm sorry, that did not show up very good, so my bad. But this sole owner, start with that one, 22%. That's me, okay? If I own land in my name, that's me. This one didn't show up too good either. Joint tenancy, 28%. That's me, my wife. We own it together. Okay? Tenants in common, 8%. That's me, that's my wife. I'm going to tell you the difference. Joint tenancy, me, my wife. I die, goes to my kids. So my half interest goes to my kids. Tenants in common, my wife and I own it together. I die. My half goes to her. Okay? The other piece is trust at a strong 20%. Trusts are your family members. I may set up a trust. My wife and I may own it. But somewhere along the way, we put that land in a trust for our kids. So when you look at sole owner, Joint tenants, tenants in common, and trusts, it's all family. Might be owned in a different type entity, but it's still family. Corporations at 10, LLCs at 5, those are not out-of-state corporations. Those are entities owned by families that are just put in a different entity. I know there's land in Iowa owned outside of a family, but not very much. I think there's a kind of a stigma out there. There's land owned that way, but it's very, very few acres. Okay? I'm going to get into the reason here pretty quick. This slide will sh probably show that a little better. This goes back to 1982, 35 years ago. Sole owner, joint tenants tenants in common. 85% was owned by me or my wife and I. Okay? Today, 
that's more like 65%. The rest of that is trusts, LLCs, and corporations owned by the family. Why? Land values here, 1,000 bucks an acre. Land values here, 8,000 bucks an acre in Iowa. So from a tax standpoint, the wealth is bigger if you're not careful the government will tax you, you'll have capital gain on all those acres if you don't find a way to move it to a family member. Move it to a trust, move it to an estate, move it to another corporation, move it to an LLC to protect that valuation versus having to pay a bunch of taxes on it, okay? It's really the only reason these other entities have come into play, okay? They're for tax purposes. So many of you have probably seen this. I was split up into nine different crop districts. I'm going to use this really quick. Northeast Iowa. Who is from Northeast Iowa? I met today. Okay. Joint tenancy. Remember, husband and wife. Own 40% of it that way in Northeast Iowa and all the land that's owned. West Central Iowa is at 22. Take the opposite. West Central Iowa trusts are at 28% north and Northeast is eight. I have no idea why. No idea. I don't know if it's the attorneys that work there. Maybe. Northeast Iowa I know is a little more high in dairy. I don't know if that matters. Um, I just throw that up there to show you there are differences in Iowa on how land is held, but I really don't know why. Interesting slide on method of finance. What hits me is, did you realize about 80% of the Iowa land is free of debt? 24 million acres in Iowa has no debt on it. As a lender, I thought, hmm, seems kind of high number, but it's true. The change 1982 was 60%. You see this red? So in 1982, 35 years ago, when we were going through the struggles of the 80s, there was quite a bit of ground under contract. And I just want to explain under contract for some of you who may not know that. Where's Cassie? She left. Okay, then I'm going to pick on you, okay? I got a farm to sell. You're going to buy it from me, so we have a contract. So you owe me the money. When you get done paying me off, I'm going to give you a deed. Versus a mortgage, Ben pays me all my money, but he's borrowing the money from farm credit or whoever, farm credit preferably, and you owe them the money, okay? 1982, struggling economy, struggling ag economy, people couldn't get financing. Many of their land sales and purchases were on contract. Number two reason, interest rates were sky high. We were lending money in the 80s at up 12 and 15 and 18 percent interest compared to today at five or six. So people would buy land on contract because they couldn't get the money. They would have, they do it at seven, eight, nine percent, cheaper than lending, just as good as a CD rate, but that's changed over time as the economy's gotten better. Chart on Iowa Farm.
对。
bottom of that.